the really, really sad part of all this is the lengths these guys will go to lie to people that they are in relationships with. It's one thing to tell it at, uh, at a VFW over a beer of what a big fucking hero you are. It's another one to do it in a relationship where you are about to share bank accounts, have kids, get mortgages, and you have allowed her to believe you are something you are fucking not. And that is no way to start a relationship. And it's a problem for guys like me and the guys watching this video that don't understand it either. Why would you do that? But they do. They sure as fuck do. So. What type of uh, work did you perform while you were in the service? My first couple of years I was in the service. I was on submarines. I was a nuclear machinist mate. I worked in the engine room. And then uh, I was able to uh, enter an officer program. And I uh, went to be a, uh, I became a SEAL. Oh, yeah. It's time once again for one of those Veterans History Project phony Navy SEALs of the week. And uh, I did a number of them. I got a bunch more. But I got to this guy, and what should have been simple to do was anything but. It's hard to do this guy because he is so hard to listen to. And almost as bad as him is that gum chewing moron of a kid that is doing the doggone interview. This guy and that kid go on for 53 minutes. And I've had to endure it over and over and over again. The date of the interview is April 6, 2007. Place of interview is Bob Duncan's house. Um, interview viewee's birthday is 19 August 1959. Brian Summers will be the interviewer. Um, sir, what war branch or what war were you in? in branch of service. I served in the Grenada conflict, Panama. Uh, Somalia and uh, the first Iraq war, Persian Gulf War. Can you tell us what rank you were? I was a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy. Alright, um, where all did you serve again? Um, I served all over the world. Uh, I was stationed in Little Creek, Virginia for a good part of my career. I was also stationed in uh, New London, Connecticut, or Groton, Connecticut, when I was on submarines at the first of my uh, Navy career. So let me just drop the bombshell and uh, get away from all the suspense of this guy. This guy retired from the Navy on submarines. He was never a SEAL. He was never an officer. He was a nuclear machinist mate and did his time in there. One thing he purposely leaves out of this interview is that he served his first four years in the Air Force. And... To help you better detect bullshit, because half of this 53 minutes is total phony SEAL combat awards bullshit. The other half is accurate submarine stuff. And so when you watch these first two clips, and then I'll go through with this, pay close attention as uh, the excitement level in his voice and everything else while he's talking about submarines and submarine life. And then when he starts talking about SEALs, He's, he's much more uh, because he doesn't want to get boxed in. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's getting this shit from movies. When I was on the submarine, they used to have uh, what they call family grams. Yeah. And it was only a one-way thing. And your parents or your wife or whatever, they only had six. And it was only 40 words. And what they would do was they would fill this out and they would send it to the sub base. And then somebody in the radio there, they would type it all out and would go up to a satellite, but the submarine had to stay low. And this is fairly interesting, had to stay deep. And then when they would come up and put up the one antenna that they could get these messages, it was a satellite burst, they could get all these messages in, in no time along with other things. Which conflict did you exactly serve in? Or? Uh, I was, uh, I can't remember all the code names for it. I think Furry, right. furry. 
Fury, Urgent Fury was uh, Grenada, served in Grenada, Panama, Somalia. Uh, one of the, that I didn't mention earlier was the Bosnia uh, Kosovo conflict, um, the uh, first desert, uh, Iraq war, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, Desert Storm also served uh, down in South America. So after waking up to clip one where he's going into small detail about how these family grams get out and the periscope and the antennas and 40, I mean, he's 40 words. I mean, he remembers all this shit from all those years ago and he's all excited. He's making eye contact to uh, where he does it when he starts talking about all this uh, countries he's been to. He's not making any eye contact with the kid. This is something for you to learn about, especially the eye contact, body language. He is trying to recall uh, this stuff that uh, he has probably told a bunch of times, but he's just struggling with it. Now, watch the same shit as he gets into awards, how many awards he's got, and the struggles that he's having getting this all out for that kid. Were you awarded any medals or citations from being in the service? Yeah, I've got a few. I've got three Purple Hearts, uh, Bronze Star, Silver Star, um, Defense Service Medal, a few others. I don't really pay that much attention to. Do you either. remember how you received these? Yeah, I, I received the uh, Defense Service Medal for um, what we did when I was in the Persian Gulf, uh, hunting scuds and uh, doing a recon very, very deep in Iraq territory. Uh, in Kuwait and Iraq, um, and Purple Hearts, I received those in Somalia. Um, the rest of them, I can't really remember all right. in, but I do know that I received them. Yeah. He starts telling about his first combat experience in Grenada, and it's kind of hard to explain. It is kind of hard to explain, because it's just, he's getting this from movies, and where he's getting this shit from is Heartbreak Ridge with Clint Eastwood in it. That's where he's stealing that. My first combat experience in Grenada, it's kind of hard to explain because after all this training, going through SEAL training, that, that you think that you're going to be cool, calm, and collected, and you try to be that way on the outside. But uh, you're really scared on the inside. And I, I remember walking out to get on the helicopter. We, we flew off of a, a, a Marine ship. It was an LPH or LPD. I can't remember which one, but it looks like a big carrier, but it's a... They call them gator freighters and So the kid asked him how they entertained themselves, and he gets a big kick out of that. You can see he has just honed in on uh, his many experiences on board a submarine. Played a lot of cards, played a lot of backgammon. You know, he's all excited and he's grinning about this because this is going to be easy for him to to tell. Anything outside of that submarine shit is not easy for him to tell. Um, do you uh, recall how people are entertaining themselves while <laughs> sitting around? Like, yeah, we played a lot of cards. We played uh, a spades. Um, I got to do spades. <laughs> I know how to play spades pretty well. Uh, we watched, uh, we used to have, because Arnold Schwarzenegger was so popular, we'd have uh, theme movie nights. Oh, yeah. Uh, like Arnold Night or something like that. And then um, when I was in Desert Storm, we had scorpion races and things like that. We played volleyball, lifted weights, stuff like that. I've spent half my life in the world's coldest environments, the coldest environments on this planet, and uh, the other half in the world's hottest, uh, nasty-ass deserts. And I've been around a lot of scorpions. I used to keep them as pets, and I've never seen one that would race. So where he come up with that, I don't know. Uh, but it is original, and I appreciate a little originality, but the scorpion races, now that never happened. <laughs> All right, well, that's about wrapped up there. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. That's fine. No problem, Brian. Did it? Did it? Everything come yeah, out all right? Yeah, I think. I hope it should. Well, go ahead and check, and if you have to ask a question again. 
One of the things I always do talking to people about these fake SEAL claims is ask, why is he telling you he's a SEAL? What is he trying to get out of this? Because if you can figure that out, then you've unlocked the, uh, the secret to whatever that guy wants, and it is vast and varied. Uh, well, why is he locked down in an apparent bachelor pad in Virginia with this kid telling this kid these bullshit stories? We see this with the other Veteran History Project, and to the man, they are doing it for a family. Their family, they want to be remembered when they die as being some kind of hero, and they don't deserve a fucking bit of it. But if there doesn't seem to be any sense in why he is sitting there with this kid just lying his ass off to him. So this video goes on for uh, 53 flipping minutes. Good luck with that. And just as you're about to kill yourself, right at about the halfway point, the video ends. Thanks for the interview. I'll see you later. And then he summons that kid back. He's not done yet. He's going in for round two because he saw some video uh, about submarines and he wants to clarify a few points. And for the second half of the video, he does nothing but run his mouth about all his submarine experiences and it makes you scratch your head. Why? Why are you doing this shit? This interview is going to be taken off from Friday, May 6, or April 6, 2007. This is Bob Duncan again, and he's just going to tell us a little bit about just add a couple more stories and stuff like that to the interview. Okay. Uh, um, well, I wasn't sure what to talk about, but uh, I saw a show about submarines oh, yeah. earlier, and that was the first thing I did in the Navy. It was a very difficult um this was a lot of work. I was, uh, like I said, on Friday, I was a nuclear machinist, machinist mate. Well, in a 53-minute video, you get your answer right at about the 50-minute mark. Those two aren't alone. There's someone else in the room. It's his wife, and that is who he has been wanting these stories to come out. He wants her to believe this. This is what we're doing, a Veterans History Project. They're going to put me up. Well, everything I'm saying is true. He's trying to impress her. And that sucks. However, from his time being on boats is where he... Bob has a brain that is a Rolodex brain with lots of information. He could probably name any song, and I think it's because he was so confined for such long periods yeah. of time between reading and watching movies that I really don't care about. And he can tell you not only the title, everything that happened, every actor and everything else, because he had to see it over and over and over again, you know? Yeah. And then from music, listening to it, because you had to find entertainment yourself from being confined not to what we're accustomed to. Yeah. Reading, music, and then the old movies. It's unbelievable. Well, I mean, when I was in the seals, I remember, like, I, I told my wife that uh, when we were going to Desert Storm, I didn't have a whole lot of time to grab anything, so I grabbed a copy of The Prince by Machiavelli, and I grabbed a copy of some Shakespeare deal, and I just grabbed whatever books. I mean, it's like, they said, you're gonna have to be here, boom, there. You don't have time to do a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I had all my stuff together, and I, I learned, I almost knew word for word, different chapters of The Prince, mm -hmm. and I knew, I don't know, five or six plays, Shakespeare's plays, because I sat there and read these things over, oh, and, over, and, over, and, over, and over and over and over and over. Sometimes it kept you sane. It did. It really trained me to be a really good SEAL because it really taught me attention to detail and it taught me to be able to take in a lot of information and put on this Rolodex because let's tell you about my first engineer. He was that kind of guy and he would try to, at his training, he says, you got to train your mind like a Rolodex so you can remember these things yeah. and just see in your mind. And the really, really sad part of all this is the lengths these guys will go to lie to people that they are in relationships with. It's one thing to tell it at, uh, at a VFW over a beer of what a big fucking hero you are. It's another one to do it in a relationship where you are about to share bank accounts, have kids, get mortgages, and you have allowed her to believe you are something you are fucking not. And that is no way to start a relationship. And it's a problem for guys like me and the guys watching this video that don't understand it either. Why would you do that? 
but they do. They sure as fuck do.